and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. To be honest, I just wanted to get you away from him. But yeah, let's go. Are you okay? We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Hey, ma'am, can we talk? Sorry. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. I do want you to tag along. You seem pretty cool. But yeah, figures. He didn't exactly strike me as the most honest soul. Oh, he ain't a liar. He believes every word he says. It's just... He doesn't always get where other folk are talking from. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Did you know this Adelaide Reed mentioned? Miss McDevitt? Oh, gosh, no. She was a real important person. A flavorist. Made all the food taste decent. She used to work up in the big office with Mr. Thompson. All I know is, she left after her son died. It was a real big to-do. I could hear them both yelling clear from my own place. You can't leave it at that. Why were Reed and Adelaide arguing? Can't say as I know. I wasn't there. The sound carried, but not the words. If Mr. Thompson ain't of a mind to tell you his own self, you'd best ask Miss McDevitt. If you can get out to her. How well did you know the deserters? You worked with them? You were friends? Or what? I don't know anybody, well. I mostly listened to them talk, kept my head down. There was a boy named Thomas who used to follow me around, asking questions about the stuff I fixed. He was real sweet to me. Not any sort of dissident. I can't blame anybody for wanting to leave. This town's got issues. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but... Every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Er, uh, sure. I suppose it couldn't hurt. We'll stop by. Thanks, ma'am. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say, anyways. Okay, so where is this vicar? On the right there. That looks more like an observatory. I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. I'm guessing that's him. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's tossball predictions, the quickest way out of town. Parvati wanted to talk to you about what Reed asked us to do. But what? I thought you would talk to him. Oh, what? You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? 
He wants us to cut off power to Adelaide's deserters. Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. What do you think of Adelaide's group? They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? I mean kinda. Depends how well the leader can provide beyond your walls. Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp. So that's not a variable I can account for. So what do you advise? Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Is that even possible? Not if things are left to stand as they are. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. And why is that? One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. Why would a vicar be after a banned heretical book? I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. Ah, uh, I'll need to know a little bit more about this book before I agree to this. It's a handwritten journal. A faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value. Should they ever read it. Okay, I'll look for your book. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. Okay, let's go see these deserter folks. Where would they be? Up there, okay, so I can leave here the way I came in and follow the road. Which was this way? Wonder if the plague's ever been. If you're falling sick, I don't want you near me. Don't worry. Uh, no, wrong way. Right, Wish by the maintenance division. Now. Yeah, this looks right. Is that a volcano? Cool. Marauders, I think. Again, I don't want to prejudge. Hello? Huh? Everyone all right? 
right? I should really remember what these guys look like. Red and yellow armor, and some blue. that was cute. This gun is pretty fun to use. Trespassing, lockpicking, hacking, and murder are all considered illegal activities and are frowned upon by society. Avoid being seen if you want to engage in those activities without consequences. What I'm wearing improves my tech skills. This one does as well, but also has slightly better armor. And I have points to spend. A few in tech. Ranged, and stealth. And one in dialogue, that'll do. Shall we go the quick way down? Not a peep for me. I'm ready for Community center could be interesting. I'm out of energy ammo.
The air cover is great until they walk around it. Coming soon, feast your eyes on the great frilled manta queen. Sovereign of her nest, imported from the wilds of Terra 1 to thrill and excite your imagination. Canids can be found all over Emerald Vale in two distinct varieties, domesticated and feral. Feral canids hunt in packs, while domesticated canids can be loyal companions. It is important to remember that the canid is still a wild animal, and should be treated with caution. These are what chased me. This display, fashioned to resemble a pair of mighty primals, required extensive field research, let us have a moment of silence for the researchers who gave their lives in the pursuit of authenticity. If the ocean and rivers are the heart and veins of Emerald Vale, then Saltuna is our highly profitable blood, these meaty fish live in the ocean and migrate upstream during mating season, Saltuna are semelparous, which means they perish after a single reproductive episode. That's when our trusty Spaces Choice Harvesters scoop up their corpses to be cleaned, processed, canned, and delivered straight to your dinner table. From I. Rosenberg. Everyone, the keycard encoder in the lobby is back up and running. Hopefully it won't go on the fritz again and start shooting keycards at anyone who walks by. As a reminder in case it does break down again, you can borrow a keycard from the director or one of the workers in the second floor office if you lose your card. Ira. From L. Trammell. Director Pickett, I must lodge a complaint. Your obsession with this Manta Queen is wasting all of our budget and holding up development on the entire exhibit. This has to stop. Lamont Trammell. Financial Officer. From Hunters and Trackers Limited. Hello Mr. Pickett. This letter is to update you regarding your request for one, one adult Manta Queen. As you may remember, our trackers discovered a beautiful specimen out in the wild. For your approval, we deployed a team of our highly skilled hunters to kill it for you. We regret to inform you that the entire team has perished. Please expect an invoice from our office including the cost of their gravesite fees, as stipulated in our contract. Additionally, we must ask you to cover the cost of all equipment damaged, corroded, dissolved, eaten, or digested, partially or otherwise. Thank you for your patronage. Please allow me to offer you the opportunity to purchase a second hunting expedition at a 10% discount. I look forward to hearing from you. Sincerely, Hunters and Trackers Limited. Partnered with the Wildlife Eradication Society, a wholly owned subsidiary of Universe Defense Logistics, Hunters and Trackers Limited, teaching the fauna of Halcyon the cruel realities of existence. Vending machines offer a variety of items to purchase, mostly from one company. A hack skill of 20 or higher allows you to sell items to the vending machine. Restricted items on a vendor can only be purchased when you have high enough reputation with the associated faction, or a hack skill of 40 or higher.
hot dehydrated water. Without the hydrogen or oxygen, just add air. Um. Okay. First aid room key. Guide to mechanical engineering, that sounds useful. So where is the first aid room? Gotcha. Experimental anthracillin. All right, I think we're done in here.
This way, I think. Probably shouldn't walk in with my weapon drawn. Move along, stranger. We don't want any trouble. I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. I'm looking for Adelaide. I need some answers. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. Reed said something about former workers living out in the wilderness. Yeah, that's us. And you can tell Thompson we're doing just fine by ourselves. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on you. Okay, where can I find Adelaide? Over in the hothouse, tending crop. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. You and me both. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to repair my ship. Well, look at you. Buzzing around the Aether with your very own ship. Rest of us gotta make do with the ground at our feet. No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. Now I'm pacing around wondering if Marauders got to her. Oh, that sucks. I'll keep an eye out for her. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Vale's a wide place. She could be anywhere. Uh, no. Don't worry about it, I'll find her. Appreciate it. Honest. Can you tell me a little about Zoe? I'll tell you what I can. Any idea where she might be hiding? Vex me. If she told anybody, they ain't telling me. I'd check her room, but I got yelled at for snooping once already. How well do you know her? Well, enough to know we never got on. Zoe and Stefan were close. If anybody knows the workings of her mind, he does. Stefan, all right. Let's change the subject. What is it? Up uh, nothing. See you around. This'll be where Adelaide is then. Oh gosh, it's so pretty. It is, isn't it? If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're barren illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? You must be Adelaide. I have been called that, among other things. Green Thumb, Grandmother, the strange old lady who keeps flowers. But yes, Adelaide will do just fine. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobaccorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Looks like you've made a home for yourself out here. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, Cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. Why did you leave your old home? 
It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Is this your greenhouse? No, dear. The garden belongs to us all. Life is the gift of the universe, and the universe yields its bounty equally, absent of prejudice. I'm surprised you've managed to grow anything out here. Well, not really. This is a botanical lab. The soil around the Vale went sour years ago, but I found a way to sweeten it back up. The secret recipe is a little bit of elbow grease, a dash of love, and a heaping pile of special fertilizer. So, the reason I'm here, Reed sent me to make peace with you. Reed Thompson? You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Uh, he's willing to make amends. Is he, though? He did say that, but he didn't explain how. I don't think he did anyway. Maybe I wasn't listening. Something about coming back to town or losing power. I potentially wasn't really listening. I can't say I blame you. Reed is positively soporific. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. Reed asked me to divert your power over to him. He mentioned a geothermal plant. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Uh, I mean I didn't exactly agree, but your camp has a power regulator and I need it to repair my ship. Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater, and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. I know Reed is a butt sniffer, but what have you got against the town? You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. Don't like you throwing that in her face to get me on your side, yeah this pretty much. Let's not anger her though. Let's say I help you, what happens to Edgewater? Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down, workers desert in droves, and our own little camp grows and thrives. Hmm. I'll consider it. I trust you will listen to your conscience. What do you think? Something you need? You mentioned something earlier that I wanted to ask you about. You mean about the mission being too clean? Isn't it supposed to be clean? It's a church. I know, but... Vicar says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicar sees is one they ain't never been run. It's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. Then why do you want to talk to him? The Vicar's about the only soul in the Vale who spends his time thinking on what is and ain't right. It's just that when he looks at me, I feel I disappoint him. You seem to seek people's approval way too much. Oh, that's Thomas. 
He used to follow me around before he left the cannery. Thomas. Keep your wits about you, friend. You then. Keep your wits about you, friend. Where's Thomas? You. Oh, uh, didn't see you there. I was, uh, well, I was just occupying myself with a little engineering. Whoa, Miss Parvati. Hey, you're, uh, what, um, how, how are you? Hi, 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 uh, hello. Are you, uh, uh, are things safe out here? How are you keeping? Great, just great. I've been trying to keep stuff running, just like you. Only I'm not so... Wait, they didn't kick you out, did they? Oh, gosh, no. I I'm just along with this lady here. Are you from town? I, I mean, you don't exactly look like you're from town. I'm just passing through, pretty much. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were from town or if you were one of us. Something's been chewing at me, you see. Fact is, I've been, well, lying. To everybody here. Camp thinks I'm a mechanical genius, but I couldn't fix a busted chair. Um. Yeah, it's never too late to start learning. I could give you a couple pointers. I'll take all the help I can get. I set my mind to learning the craft of the engineer, you see. I want to make something of myself. You ever heard of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering? Comes in a set of three. If I had my hands on one of those data pads, I could teach myself the ins and outs. Didn't I pick those up one of good. those? My dad kept a copy with him when he was working in the cannery. I know the old community center kept a copy. Should find another one back in town. If you could find me even one of those pads, I'd be greatly obliged. Today's your lucky day, Thomas. I've got one of those data pads you wanted right here. No kidding! Really? Well, which one? Part 1. Found it in the Community Center Archives. Look at that! Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody'd search out those data pads for me. I'll let you know if I find any others. Sure! I'd be glad to take them off your hands. I want to ask you something. What's on your mind? How long have you lived here? Couple months. This camp's my home. People you see milling about, they're my family. At least I think of them that way. I owe them my life. Would have died in the wilderness if they hadn't chanced upon me, starving and delirious. What were you doing out in the wilderness? We all left the cannery for one reason or another. Me? I was let go. Mostly on account of my incompetence. I mean, I was incompetent. I couldn't even survive on my own. Grace found me, Adelaide took me in, I've been on my feet ever since. You weren't incompetent. You just didn't fit the cannery. Not like here. This place had a U-shaped hole, and now it doesn't. You could stay, you know. Here. I'd be happy to... I mean, uh, we could really use... Uh, this isn't coming out right. Uh, if you want, Adelaide would make a place for you. If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Keep your wits about you, friend. 
Keep your wits about you. No friend. one else wants to talk. You hungry? We got canid ribs, canid flank, canid snout too. Something I can help you with? I'm told one of your numbers gone missing. You mean Zoe? Yeah, we were pretty close. Not like her to go loping off. Can you tell me a little about Zoe? Zoe was always obsessed with this cereal. Masked Marketeer. A scion of Byzantium turns to banditry and teaches his marauder companions the wisdom of free market economics. Shame she up and vanished when she did. I had a surprise lined up for her. You sound like some type of corporate fixer asking all these questions. What? I've only asked two. What was that about surprising Zoe? The other day I got my hands on a genuine copy of the latest Masked Marketeer. I was gonna surprise Zoe with it, but she was gone the next day. What happened on the day Zoe disappeared? Zoe and I were gonna watch the serials, as is our custom. She never turned up. I looked around, but she was nowhere to be found. Was she acting strange before she disappeared? Can't say I recall Zoe ever acting strange. Well, except for her habit of writing things down on scraps of paper. She called it journaling, but I think it's just plain odd. That could be helpful. Maybe she wrote down where she was going. Keep your wits about you, friend. So where might Zoe live? A locked door. Is this her room? If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. Keep your wits about you, friend. Could also get in this way. I can't find any notes anywhere, and this is the only room I can't seem to get into. Go away, please. Get in, dude.
Wait, what? Oh, I thought there'd be stairs leading up from the other locked door. And now I don't have enough magpix to get in there. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.